Bum, 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 bum. I love this music. I really do want it. Good job, Discord. That's dope. Fan of the music. Let's start the stage. What's up, Monsieur Teacup? Oh, we got Woody here, Woody here, dude. What's up, Woody? Yo, yeah, that's dope. Yo, what's up, Woody? Yeah, come say hi, dude. Get up here. Get you up here, Woody. I invited you. I think I did. Invite to speak. You're invited to speak. Missed out. We played some Fortnite on Monday, dude. We came close to hitting the challenge. It was lit. Oh. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. Wow, look at all these questions we got. Birdie Bots ever flavor beans? Wait, is that from Harry Potter? A Harry Potter reference. Birdie Bots ever flavor beans. Officer, uh, oh, it's okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, click on the stage. Table. Hear me, sir. So if you figured out, so sis. It's also there's a whole um. What's up, noise? Hello. What, what was up with what was up with your ram dog? It just like it just decided to shit the bed. Yeah, it did. I had to reset the CMOS and then it worked for some reason. Oh, okay, that's dope. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, I've I've played that game of like messing around with like DRAM timings to like try and overclock the PBO and whatnot, and then yeah, it just like dies. Yeah, I mean, I think a good my thing. RAM runs at thirty two hundred megahertz. I wanted to get it to thirty six. Yeah, it should so run at thirty six. My... Oh oh oh, it it's not rated for thirty six. It just runs at thirty two. Yeah. Ah, yeah. see, that's a problem. Especially, dude. Wait, that. wait. You're running a a, a fifty seven hundred though, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, you should be running at thirty six hundred. Hundred percent. Yeah, I need to get that infinity fabric to eighteen hundred. Yeah, I get the infinity the infinity <laughs> fabric. <laughs> yeah, I have my running at thirty six, but I think I was like trying to mess with the what's it called? The what's it you know, like the four four five, the CL CLT timings, what are they called? I forget what it's called. Uh, it's called DRAM timings. The, the I mean is it called DRAM timings? CL and then Yes, that. that's right. Yes, yeah, CL something something something. I was like messing around with that and yeah, it will just like brick your PC. And I was doing this so many times that I, I install... You know how, like, your computer case has, has buttons for, like, reset and whatnot? Yeah. I just manually wired one of those buttons to just clear the CMOS. <laughs> so, That's a good, I should do yeah, that. Yeah, That's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. It's a good trick. Hey, what's going on, Rampton? Yeah, so take one of, take one of your, your buttons or something and then put that onto the jumpers for the CMOS. You, you know, like, yeah. you usually you take, like, the two things and you connect the two pins? The, sw mm -hmm. the switch will do the same thing. The switch will just connect it. It's a, it's Maybe a neat. Doing it with a screwdriver. A hundred percent, yeah. Because yeah, otherwise you're gonna like you know like pierce your motherboard or something, and that's not good. <laughs> don't want to do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, cool. Yeah, I used to I used to overclock a lot. I used to have a lot of fun with that, and then I realized I was wasting hours for like three percent performance gains, and I was like, yeah, there's no point to this anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, it used to be very lucrative because what used to happen is when um, computer manufacturers put out chips, they produced basically the same chip. But they kind of like software locked it or, or or whatnot because it wasn't it wasn't very uh, effective for them to. Pr it, it's the same thing. You, you see this on Teslas, actually. By the way, all Teslas come sometimes with the same battery capacity, but they use software to lock like how much of it you're allowed to use, and you have to pay to use more of it, <laughs> uh, which is kind of dumb. But I get it. It's capitalism. 
So it was the same thing with processors. They used to all basically all put out these great processors, and then so you could take the ones that had been like locked down, unlock them, and overclock them so that they were basically as good as like the top end ones. But nowadays, all the processors that they release are basically overclocked to the max. Like we're trying to beat Moore's law with a fucking sledgehammer, and um, as a result, you can't really get that much of performance gain. Like a thirty seventy Ti is already. Basically, a 3070, which has just been overclocked the shit out of, to try to become a 3080. And so, if you try to overclock a 3070 Ti anymore, you're already pulling like 350 watts. You're not going to get any more out of it. It's done. Like, it's juiced. Um, anyways, I could nerd out forever about computers. What's up, Bengals? <laughs> uh, hello, Teacup. Teacup's like, you know what day it is? It's the day before the Steam Deck is not on sale anymore. Uh, I actually, okay, no, this was cool. So, uh, what was it? I, I, uh, I, Hypatia's been very good at, like, motivating me to, to actually apply for fun. Uh, so I did do that today. However, sure, let's see. This was the email I got from Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast basically just said, like, no. Mr. You hectic, Mr. Beast. I emailed him, dude. There's a Beast philanthropy. I wrote a really nice letter about, like, how I think you're awesome, man. And the kids in my Discord call me, like, the poor Mr. Beast. So, like, <laughs> let's help no, out a little bit with that, right? But this is the whole, like, we get thousands of emails, like, yada, 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 yada. I get it, dude. Like, this is why I get so discouraged with emailing any sort of company, whatever the fuck, grant, because these people get thousands per day, and they don't know oh, how to yeah. distinguish it. Helping us many people to accomplish this efficiently will focus primarily on community and on the individuals. Like, oh, well, I am a community. Like, this dumb bitch, what? Yeah. Like... <laughs> Is this what they're sending you, or are they replying to us? This is what they sent to me. They said, uh, on communities. And, like, I very, I do, I very much, I very much explained in this email that, like, we are an organization, right? I, I put, you know, like, we're a non-profit, blah, blah, blah. Here you can be, basically. No, I did, dude. I said this. I said we had actual education, you know, like this. And like I even sent it from actual education, like all this stuff, you know, like I don't know, just like my whole I life just, just just fuck them, dude. Like fuck them. <laughs> That's my whole thing. I bet you 20 bucks with an automated message. It was 100%. They don't read this shit. I know they don't. Uh and this is where you need you need the personal connections to get anyone to even listen to you. No, um, gold, gold, gold. It's it's annoying. It's What's super annoying. Can when you send out email to, to when uh, they responded? Uh, yeah, I sent out the email. What was it? I sent it at. Wait, one sec. Not this. I sent it out at eight fifty eight. They replied at eight fifty nine. Oh uh, yeah, that's automated. <laughs> it's automated, dude. What? They didn't even fucking read my email. I spent like two fucking hours like putting this email together. They didn't even fucking read it. Oh. They're using ChatGPT to screen the. <laughs> it's so annoying, dude. Sorry. Anyways, I, I mean, know. you could always go to North Carolina. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we need to do something viral. Do I need to like eat like a jar of peanut butter on screen? Will Will that get us there? Like, what do I need to do? Donating fifty. I'll eat a jar of peanut butter. butter. I'll do it. <laughs> I I think I do it regardless, but I don't know. It's just. It, this is the whole thing. It's about getting attention. You have to get attention somehow. Uh, I'm not going to stop trying. I'm just saying this is why it's discouraging. This is why this sucks. Uh, is um, I don't know. We'll keep trying, Hypatia. I, 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 didn't get any, I didn't get any emails back from the other people I sent. Um, I know one person that might like accept and read the email. What? The Australian government. The Australian government. Okay. I'm a U.S.-based nonprofit. So. Dang, the Australians will read it, though. Okay, all good. That's the updates. Uh, we're going to email more people. Uh, if you guys have any ideas about people that I should reach out to that will actually listen to me, I'm down. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, I'm going to keep doing what I do. I'm going to keep teaching. I'm going to keep helping you guys. And eventually, also, uh, something will hit. If you need help with writing emails and stuff like that, I've uh, gotten good at corporate. Uh, oh, have you? Well, that's dope. Oh, I like corporate lingo. I hate corporate lingo, but I like people who are good well, at corporate. One of the things I've got um, good at is passive aggressively threatening people with uh, <laughs> looking up blogs. 
<laughs> Passively aggressively I'm, threatening I'm, people. <laughs> yeah, I, I am I aggressively. I, I, uh, I threatened somebody. IKEA so much that we're like, we can't answer you anymore. Please contact our legal department. Wow. wow. Pretty much, I, 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 not threatening, but pretty much that was like, I'm gonna need, uh, you know how when you make a phone call? Yes. Like, I got to a point where I was frustrated. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna start recording my own phone calls as well. Uh huh. I'm doing that like in case I ever start a civil lawsuit against them. Cause okay. like at this point I'm committed to the. Yeah, you're like, this call is currently to- being recorded. <laughs> yeah. So when you do that, um, when you uh, make, like call someone, uh, if you continue the phone call, you can always, uh, like, it essentially means you've already consented to you being recorded. However, yeah. you can ju- withdraw consent at a later time. I see. But given that these phone calls have been them with me, I don't want them, I don't want to de- delete it. And it doesn't matter if they want to. They might just tell me, yeah, for sure, we deleted it. Uh-huh. But then they like, share it somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Pretty yeah, much yeah. I called them. And then the lady, I was like, uh, so I've got hung up on so many times. First thing I say, I'm like, can I have your name and employee ID? And she's like, oh, this is real. Wow. Then, yeah, ask for the employee like, ID. I like that one. And then she's like, oh, we are not allowed to give that to you or something like that. And I was like, all right, whatever. Every time she tried to put me on hold, I was like, no, it's okay. I'll just stay on the call. Like, don't put me on hold. <laughs> and then finally, I was like, okay. And she was like, is that everything I can help you with? I was like, oh, just one more thing. I would like to have the recordings of my voice sent out to me. And she's like, oh, we're not allowed to do that. And I was like, actually, based on uh, privacy policies of IKEA sure. and a thing called the Pipetta, which is like the privacy, uh, like something I like, I was looking it up on, on the screen. Yeah. Like there's a thing called the Pipetta, which is like the Internet uh, Privacy Act. Mm-hmm. And I'm worried that requires all of them to like share it with you. And then they say that. And then I, they're like, oh, we can't like, she was like, oh, let me reach back to the legal team. They reach back to their back office to see what they can tell you. And then they're like, oh, they just told me, like, we can't give that to you. You have to contact the lawyer. And I was like, actually, in here, <laughs> in base section six of this, I'm just reading the laws. And I could hear her voice just shake over the floor. He's just like, oh, fuck. I was like, I actually don't need a representative for this. I need the, I need the recordings. And then it got so bad that we're like, I was like, okay, fine. I'll contact your legal team. What's their contact uh like how can i contact it is their email phone number she was like i don't know and then i was like what do you mean like how can i contact them she was like just tell your lawyer to contact them I like, <laughs> yeah, okay what? who's my lawyer contact <laughs> me and she was like i don't know so i love it dude yeah corporate warfare dude let's do it i'm down oh oh yeah what's up mondo dude mondo's a good good friend of mine dude new baby's adorable i'll send you a pic yeah send me a pic dude that's dope that's cool having kids and stuff i'll get there someday I need to, like, be able to feed myself before I can feed, like, another individual, I guess. <clears throat> um, that's cool. Uh, oh, one thing I did see. Uh, have you heard about this this company called Brilliant Rampton? Have you heard about them? They're pretty cool, I think. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, right? Yeah, Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So they had, um, what is this? Brilliant. I, I like their mission and stuff. Like, they do, you know, very cool interactive math and science stuff. I'm a, I'm a big yeah. fan of their... Uh, like this, this is this is basically what I do. Like make math and science mm-hmm. exciting, right? Yeah, uh, they've been around for a very long time. I know at least ten years. Yeah, I, I saw twenty twelve is what I saw. Um, okay, yeah. And then I was like, okay, so I, I, I sent the, I sent them an email, uh, basically asking if we could get access to there because they have a, uh, a for educators like platform, basically, so that like we wouldn't have to pay and and we could try to use this and integrate it with the kids that are uh you know on our Discord. Because like I would apply for it, but it's but I'm not you know I'm not a uh, I'm not an accredited whatever the fuck you know education thing. So you know whatever they'll they'll figure it out. I sent them an email, but then I also saw I was like, oh wait, do they have any careers? Uh, and it turns out they do. <laughs> they have one where they're they're literally looking for someone who's like a content manager. And I was like, oh okay, well that's what I do. So I don't know, maybe I'll apply to this job. And I've never I've never actually applied to a job in my life. I've never had a real job. I just, I always kind of like just work for myself, but I don't know. These people seem pretty cool. So. Yeah. Brilliant. 
it was definitely one of the, the platforms. It's been around for... Yeah, so uh, it's been around since... 2012 but like i haven't i haven't really heard of them until like the last year or two when i just keep getting bombarded by like their instagram ad i was like oh okay uh yeah i think you've heard about them um in like 2015 2016 yeah i guess that's like eight years but um i think they were officially formed in 2012 so they've been around for 11 at least yeah so like a lot of the youtube channels like i i follow a lot of youtubers who like made math and physics content uh-huh and they sponsored them a lot so, oh, they do. Oh, okay, cool. Well, that's dope. Yeah, let's get some sponsorship. What's up, Brilliant? If you're watching this, I would really appreciate some sponsorship. Maybe a job. I'll take a job, too. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, 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 you know, I like these vibes, you know? Nine to five, no. But they're like high intensity, high velocity. That's me, dude. I'm intense. Do it. Um, anyways, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll see how this works out. We'll see, see if they respond. Okay. All right. Let's start off the stream. We got a lot of questions to go through. That's Welcome, everyone. Office hours. My name is Dr. Gold. Sexual education. The stream that helps you out with your math homework, science homework, nice. life homework, everything. I'm joined by my awesome associate professors, Ramton and Hypatia. Sweet. I'm awesome. Here. Teacup's also here. Teacup is our is our is our moderator, our debate lead debate moderator. Which I guess we'll do tomorrow, right? Because we'll have old hour. It's already Wednesday. Yeah, yeah these, days go, these days go by so quick. Okay, cool. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. What happened to where? Where? Soches, where's this guy? Someone, someone asked a question. Soches, come back. Where's this guy? Soches. <laughs> uh, Soches sent oh, me. Uh, bro, let me show you something okay. about our game project. Your what project? Your, your project? Like uh, yesterday we were talking about developing a math game. Correct. Yeah, the game. Yeah, game project. I like that idea. Yeah, let me show you something. This is really cool. Okay. Are you gonna like share your screen? Uh, you want to send me a link? Like, uh, let me share the screen, or uh, let me try if I can do that. Uh, yes. One, one sec. I gotta. I gotta shot, stop sharing my screen on Discord. No, you don't have. To. I can use the virtual camera, so that's uh. You don't have to. Oh, okay. Yeah, the virtual camera works too. Although it's, it is compressed sometimes a little bit. Okay. Let me see if I can. Can y'all see it? Yes, I can see it now. I can, yeah, see, so your, I can see your camera. This is the. This is like I was just testing how Unity should work. Oh, this is and, Unity. Okay. Yeah. And the, the coolest part is that even without the Unity AI, chat gpt already oh gave you can already get it to generate code for you correct uh, implementation like this code implements the rotation the movement okay uh, let me show you how it plays okay. like the photo camera like Let's this see. is so much more like look at this yeah. i'm watching i'm watching look at this this Let's is see. rotation with the mouse Yes. I, I was thinking like uh, maybe adding a crosshair in the center of the screen so that so you can see where you're going. Highlights <laughs> a object. Remember that Alan Becker animation? You can just highlight this object and start dragging it or yeah. use the keyboard to adjust uh, the coefficient or something. And then this is keyboard movement. Okay. So, so yeah, the, this thing took me one second to write it. It's wow, dude. flawless on the first try. Well, the coefficient is wrong, but... Uh, that, <laughs> He's that. like, I fixed the coefficient. Well, that's dope, yeah. because, like, you basically got from being a newborn infant to being able to walk in, you know, one chap GPT request, which is pretty cool. Yeah, like, this code, uh, like, if it's to five to ten years ago when you are using it, you are going to spend at least half an hour to get it right the first time if you, yeah. just, you are new to it. So... Yeah, this thing is going to revolutionize co uh, content creation. Oh, for sure. Yeah, because sure. usually when you're writing code, like if you get like one thing wrong or something, the code just doesn't run. And then you're going through trying to figure out, oh, where did I miss a semicolon? Where did I miss like a parenthesis? Or, like what, what comment? Well, did you write right? that using ChatGPT? Yeah, ChatGPT just generated that. So yeah. the like uh, the, this prompt is just for keyboard translation, mouse rotation, for pitch and yaw avoiding game block. So gimbal walker is something like a, it's a technical thing. Is why people use quaternions, but uh, yeah, very cool, dude. 
Very cool. Big fan. That's cool. Yeah. Let's get something cool on like the video game front. We'll see if Zachtronics responds to us. That would be pretty cool. Cool guy. Um. Oh wait. Here's Woody. Let me invite Woody up. Woody, see if you can click it. I know some people have problems with the the whole Discord stages thing because the app is like. Uh. All right. Let's see. Go through our first question. Jamarcus had a fun one. I kind of like this. And then I think Jamarcus had a Jamarcus had two questions, but I'll, I'll have you answer the other one, Ramton, because I think that one's more like your your style of stuff. Uh, yeah, that one's actually this is a uh, uh, the yeah. first part is like you know fifth grader or not fifth grade, sixth grade. Yeah, question. I love this. It's like champagne, it's like beer, a- and burgers, dude. This is like my Friday night yeah. down. <laughs> The uh, second part of this is actually kind of hardcore, though. Oh, is it? Oh, okay, okay, let's see. All right, so yeah. f- first thing is uh, I'm going to assign yeah, vari- variables to this. Yeah. What's up, Woody? You made it, dude. Congratulations, dude. You figured I out Discord the, stages. I uh, clicked the hours, and then I clicked the before and did the super Okay, group. awesome, yeah. dude. I'm glad. I'm glad, Woody. I'm glad you found, you found us. Well, We're gonna- my grandparents' house now. Oh, that's cool. Where- oh, oh, yeah, you're at your grandparents' until like July, uh, August 5th, you said, right? You're there for a while. All right. Um, okay, I'm gonna assign variables to these things because I can't just say like champagne, champagne, champagne. Okay, I'm gonna say that three champagnes, which I'm just gonna call X. Three X is equal to thirty. Uh, I'm gonna call the burgers Y, I guess. Then I have X plus two Y is equal to twenty, and then I'm gonna call the beer Z. Okay, cool. Woody, one sec. Uh, mute, mute your mic real quick. All right. All right. Just message me when you want me to unmute you. I got you. All right. And then, okay, so then this equation is y plus 2z is equal to 9. This is pretty simple, right? We know how to solve this, guys. 3x is equal to 30. That means x is equal to 10, which I then plug into this. So I say x plus 2y is equal to 20. Or sorry, so 10 plus 2y is equal to 20. Subtract 10 from both sides, guys. Uh, y is equal to 5. Okay, then we go here. And we get 5 plus 2z is equal to 9. That means z is equal to 2. All right, cool. So we have x equals 10, y equals 5, z equals 2. First part is done. Okay. Uh, now we need to do this integral with the burgers and the beer and the champagne and stuff. I love this. You like this, right, Noise? Yeah, this, this is going to be fun. Okay, so uh, two burgers minus a champagne. So that's zero, right? Because two burgers would be t- two Ys, so that's 10, minus a champagne, which is 10, that's zero. Okay, so zero to infinity. And then this is a champagne, so that's uh, 10 sign of... Wait, a hot dog? Wait, what the fuck is a hot dog? <laughs> so that's the thing is like hot dog is the variable here. Oh, uh, okay, all right, all right, cool. We'll theta, call this. Theta, theta. You want to call it theta? We'll call it theta, dude. Is that cool? Theta, cool. All right, we're gonna call it theta. Mm. I like that. Yeah, it's uh, it's sine of theta, <laughs> and then this is gonna be d theta eventually, and then this is beer times hot dog. Okay. Uh oh, ew. Okay, beer is which one's beer again? This is two theta. Cool. Very cool. Okay. I like this so far. Um, okay. Uh, I can pull the 10 and the 2 out. So that's going to be a 5 integral from 0 to infinity of sine of theta over theta. Is this a special identity? I feel like it is. Um, uh, well, or, uh, there's no analytical The limit on the lower the, bound, uh, that one is... Uh, that's this, right? One? I know yeah. this one. Oh, no, this is equal to one, sorry. Equal to one, right? Yeah. Okay. And then, and then the, but the integral itself is, like, a lot more. A lot more involved? Not a lot more, but it's kind of complicated. So I, it is kind of... Uh, do we have to do integration by parts? So you could try to do that at... at uh, at first, and then you end up with like not being able to integrate things properly. Oh, no. So we actually haven't seen a lot of uh, things like this, but the, either there's a thing called the Feynman technique for integration, and then there's a thing also we can also use Laplace uh, transform. 
Oh, so, oh wow. Okay. These are things I don't so think I've, like, I think I've I, done Laplace. I, uh, I knew that, that this is done by, um, this is done by, uh, what's it called? Uh, Feynman technique. And then the Laplace one, it pretty much kind of gives us the same integral. But again, it's like a simpler, faster way. But with Feynman, it's like kind of like a cool technique. So if you want to, I can show that. But it's kind of. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. You can do this. Okay. Give me like two minutes. I need two. Two minutes. You're good. You're good. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I don't think I've seen this before. Sine of theta over theta. Kind of reminds me also of, almost of like ln of x over x, which would be nice. That would be beautiful. You substitute. It's not. Yeah, no, I think that integral doesn't have any. Well, is it? Is it? Is it not like findable on the internet? If I just do integral of sine of x, is it not a special one? Yes, it's science. No, if you but... look it up, yeah. it's like oh, you're gonna ew. find. Two... Yeah, there's two good videos on this already. It's, so it's like... it's, a, it's a Fresnel. What? Uh, oh no, no, that's the that's something else. Oh, that's something else. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there, that one. Uh, those integrals. Like, if you want to do this, uh, like explicitly, there is like things called. Uh, there are like special functions for these so from zero to infinity you can do it properly we can woody would you mind uh i got him 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 okay all right good thank you yeah let's try to do... you try you yeah, show me how, from show me how zero to infinity you can actually do this um using the Feynman technique let me just open it up you're good you're good that's too funny because this question looks like so innocent and fun because we're using all these like nice cartoon like burgers and champagne and beer. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, and uh, <laughs> impossible integral. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll do it on the next page if that's okay. Just yeah, go for it. it. Go for it. Throw on the next page. Okay. So, all right. So you have this. So you can, anyone, whoever wants to, you know, you can always try to do. The integration by parts of sine x over x. I try to see what you end up getting. What you end up getting like a lawn first, then the lawn has to be integrated. So you will never end up with, you know, just something that itself that it can be integrated. Sure. So one thing you can do is, um, I think you can do this with infinite series as well, but uh, I'm going to leave that for now okay actually i think you can do that oh yeah then it could be a bessel function that's my function be... oh no yeah dude i so, haven't dealt with bessel functions since like i don't know like graduate e and m yeah or the it's yeah I'll, I'll talk about that at some point but i think uh uh what's it called uh, noise might appreciate that method noise is a read a riemann zeta enjoyer is, is he also yeah. a bessel function enjoyer maybe <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, okay. All right. So for now, I'm going to talk about the Feynman technique. So here's the thing. This, the one over X is kind of messing with us. Mm -hmm. So with the Feynman technique, you end up either introducing some other variable or some other term so that you can integrate that or some other variable or some other term with the variable that you want to have. And you end up taking the derivative with respect to that other variable to try to get rid of this x. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a clever technique. It's not uh, like there is a rule of thumb that you can follow with this one. So you kind of have to like be able to, like once you do the, enough of these, you build an intuition. Yeah, it's kind of like a guess and check oh. almost type thing. You're just like, oh, I can exactly. see it. You know, it's the matrix. Yeah, exactly. So. One thing we do need to know is that this one over x, we need, want it to go away. So what you want to do is that you want to take the, something, and here, I'm going to take e to the negative tx, and I'm going to multiply to this integral. Okay. Now, what happens to this is if I take the derivative of this term right here with respect to t, then I get an x down there. Mm-hmm. And I will end up getting rid of that x, which is down here already. 
So yeah. why is it e to the negative tx that I'm actually trying to introduce into this rather than any other variable? Well, one thing you want to do is that whatever term you're introducing, you don't want it to mess up with your integrals like general behavior. Sure. Here's what. Here's what. So the sine of x looks like this, right? Uh huh. It it kind of uh, oscillates back and forth. Now, if you have sine of x over x, that one kind of like you know buzzes around the thing. And then what happens is that it kind of dissipates slowly. Yeah, it, does, it does like this, right? Exactly, right? So because this is a function that is uh, converging, yes, you want to multiply it by something that doesn't make it diverge, right? Ah, Hence okay. Minus t. Yeah, because when we go to infinity, right, I need this to not be e to the positive infinity. Exactly. Okay. Got you. Exactly. Hence the minus. So what I'll do is that I take the derivative of this integral with respect to t. Okay. Now, this is the part that, you know, could be a little bit confusing, especially for people who are not constantly working with variables. Uh-huh. Here's why. Wait, how, like, how do you work with this? Because you're taking a derivative with respect to t, but I also still have an x in there? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the derivative becomes with respect to t, and then this is a partial also, right? So... It only deals with the t terms, right? Oh, okay, okay. Now, to one thing, this is the thing that a lot of people end up getting confused about, is that if I have an integral of f of x dx, and then I take the derivative, I end up getting my function, right? But see, in here, the derivative is with respect to x, mm -hmm. and your integral is with respect to x. So, but however, this is not that one. This is the derivative with respect to t. So what happens is that it treats everything else that is in terms of x as like a constant. Okay. So you will end up having the sine of x over x, the integral, but then this derivative operates only at this e to the minus tx term. Okay? Okay. Now... What happens is, when I take the derivative of this, t is our variable. So you can think of it as, what's the derivative of, let me, let me call it like e to the 2t, or e, the derivative of e to the negative 2t, this is negative 2 times e to the negative 2t, correct? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. So in here, that's what our x is, is like a constant, mm -hmm. because our variable that we are differentiating with respect to is t. Yes. So once we take the derivative of this, I'll end up getting a sine x over x. Now this becomes minus x e to the negative tx. And then we still have, yeah, zero to infinity dx. Okay. Yeah. Now, what's the good thing about this? The good thing about this is that you are now going to get rid of this x at the bottom. Bye bye. Love it. There we go. So now we've left, uh, we are left with the integral. Oops. Oh, if integral. I change the color, does it change the color for you? Oh, no. Okay, good. Make yeah. sure. Sine of x e to the negative tx dx. Okay. Okay. Now, another thing we want to do is first, when, you see, before we introduce this derivative, we, we have changed our integral, right? Our integral is no longer sine of x over x. It's sine of x over x times, you know, e to the negative tx, right? Okay. So I call this i of t. It's my function. There's a function that is written in terms of the variable t. Yes. Right? Now, what happens if t is equals to zero? So oh, then I, the e, e to the minus tx just goes to 1, which is nice. Yeah, that just goes to 1. So i of 0 is exactly it's f, what is, 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 our, is our f of x. Exactly. So, so this right it's here is, is equal to i of 0. Oh, without, uh, without the derivative on it, though, sorry. Yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, this, so I, this, this right here is i of 0. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I also put it, like, on the... Side here. Oh, oh, you did over here. Okay, when we good. took the derivative, 
this is now i prime of t okay right? because the derivative is with respect to t now i come here again this is i prime of t which is equals to that now i can calculate this integral i prime of t is equals to this now for this one you can do integration by parts uh-huh it's going to take a little bit a few steps so first thing yeah, you want to is do, this where we have to do it twice and we got to loop it back yeah ah. exactly so yeah for this one I'll, I'll just write the answer i can do this but like the whole point of this is to like go over the Feynman technique okay okay but but what you want to do is yeah you do the integration by parts twice or i yes. can just do it it's okay. you can do it it's not that bad yeah so you v prime so it becomes uv. So I it is. You. Uh, and remember, now this integral is with respect to x that I'm doing as well. So it becomes uv minus v prime u. The u uh, is sine x. The v is the derivative of this. So it's uh, uh, e to the negative tx over negative t. Yeah, because then if you take the derivative of this with respect to x, then the minus t comes out. And then okay. this is from negatives, uh, sorry, from 0 to infinity. Then this becomes minus uh, u, uh, sorry, this should have been u prime v. I went back to the same. This is u prime v. And then yes, our v yes. is the e to the negative tx over negative t mm -hmm. and our v is the uh our u prime is the derivative of sine x which is oh, sine of x. good and then dx all right the cool thing is first of all these negatives cancel out good now i'm going to take this integral itself instead of rewriting everything i'm going to take this integral and then put it on this one and calculate it. So it's the integral of negative tx is also zero infinity. Negative e to the tx cos x dx from zero to infinity equals to, now once again, I'm gonna go u uh, v prime. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh wait, wait, no, you 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 don't switch it. Is isn't this isn't this v prime and this is u? Sorry, don't you want to keep doing? You do the same thing, right? Where you oh, make you make you make you make, the tri you make the trig function u and you make the e to the whatever the v prime. Yeah, I need to. Uh, yeah, I need to integrate the cosine. Oh no, 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 I need to differentiate the cosine. You're right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's u prime. V. I also, there is a minus, there's a one over t in here, which I've dropped because it's only a constant. So it's sure, sure. Yeah, we can just put it in later. That's fine. Yeah. So it becomes uv. So e to the negative tx over negative t. Mm -hmm. Our v is cos x minus zero to infinity of u, uv prime u v prime our u is e to the negative tx over negative t mm -hmm. and the derivative of cosine is also minus sine oh n. so many negatives there's so many negatives on this Dig it. yeah yeah all right thank you for that boundary. I got you. okay so the final answer becomes sine x e to the negative tx over negative t uh -huh. from zero to infinity Plus, because these two minuses canceled out okay, here. Yeah, plus, yeah. Plus 1 over t times e to the negative tx over a negative t from 0 to infinity. Mm -hmm. And then minus, my, or sorry, the, the bracket is. Yeah, we still, yeah, we still got it in the bracket. Minus, right? minus, minus. So minus, minus, minus. <laughs> so minus again, e to the negative tx over. T 
sine x dx. Oops. Very good. Sine x dx. Let's zoom back. And then we close the bracket, I think, right? And then this is an integral from 0 to infinity. Close it. Okay, so the integral that we have, which is sine x e to the negative tx from 0 to infinity, dx is equal to. Now, we can calculate uh, uh, We these. can calculate these. These aren't too bad. Yeah. So when you want to do this, like, you can plug in the... Sorry, this is sine. You can plug in infinity, so called, right? But right. technically, you get sine of infinity times e to the negative infinity. Yeah, technically, and, sine of infinity is undefined, right? Yeah, but the thing is, this is like the squeeze theorem, right? Yeah, exactly. But it's between so, negative one and one. Yeah, because the sine of x oscillates back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter what it does because. The e to the negative infinity, which goes to zero, uh, is going to kill it off, right? So we get, yeah, zero, and then minus this minus, so plus the... Uh, sine, sine of zero is just zero, so that goes away yeah, as well. Sine of zero, again, it's zero, so then this whole thing just goes to zero. Whole thing is zero. Then plus one over t, again, once we put this, uh, oh, this should be e to the... I'm missing a cosex here, sorry. Yeah. Then I put an infinity once again. Uh, again, the infinity uh, with the e to the negative infinity kills off this. So then we end up with uh, minus, with this minus, it cancels out. So you get plus 1 over t squared. e to the 0, which is 1, times cos of 0, which is 1. So plus 1 over t squared. Then minus, uh, again, this part right here. So we get minus 1 over t squared, the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative tx, mm -hmm. sine x dx. Which, lo and behold, <laughs> look at this. It's the same thing as this. Exactly. Wow. So what you will end up doing is that you bring this to the other side. Mm-hmm. Which will give you um, one plus one over t squared, right? Yeah, one plus one over t squared times your integral of zero to infinity of sine x e to the negative tx dx Good. equals to one over t squared. Uh huh. And then with this <laughs> oh. one, I'm gonna combine. <laughs> we move that over. I'll get, yeah, I'll I'll do one plus. Okay, oh, much better, much better, much better. Much better. Oh, very cool. Oh, this is dope. We'll multiply the both sides. Yeah. Which will give me... Uh, 1 over 1 plus t squared, right? Uh, 1 over 1 plus t squared, yes. Wow. Yeah. Getting closer. So we are... Uh, let me make sure... Yeah, you can wolf from out for that, yeah. This, this, this whole part thing here that we spent like... 15 minutes on it you could do this just with a calculator if you wanted to i think it's important to see this though i don't know noise have you seen this technique before have you seen the the cyclical in integrals pretty cool yeah i know you know e to the x and then like any trig function yeah e to the x and any trig function yeah you can just run it I, I wonder if there are any other ways you can do that you know, every time we see that it's a pretty cool one mm -hmm. what, is, what does it say what does it say um uh Rampton, is it okay? Checking to make sure that this is correct. What's well, sine of x e to the minus tx? Here, let's just try it. From okay, so wait, wait, wait. I think there is a minus that I've dropped somewhere. Let me. Um, it was minus tx, right? Uh, yeah, this should have been. Yeah, you get no, no. We get it. One over t squared plus one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be minus one over t squared plus one, I believe. Why is there a minus? Uh, That's what I wanna... This is fine. This is so many. 
so many negatives. We did this. Are you talking about this integral right here, Ramton? Um, sorry, which one? The one I sorry, I'll highlight it in the hot pink. This one. That one. That's what we did. Yeah, that yeah. that so, that's what all this shit was, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the final answer is actually one over one plus t squared, but it should that's be good. minus one over one plus t squared. That's the only thing. Like. It, it should be to do more steps, or that's what no, no, the no. It's just says. In, in the calculations. There's a negative missing. The final answer oh. is this, oh. right. How do you know? The, how do you know the final answer is this? Uh, because because I did the work for this. Oh, I I yeah. Wolfram Wolfram tells me it's just one over one one over one plus t squared. Oh, Wolfram tells you it's yeah. I mean, unless I'm wrong. I think I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, so we're, we're correct. Oh, we're yeah, correct. yeah, sorry, sorry. The, Yeah, you're not, you're not missing yeah, a minus yeah. sign. You're not missing, you're not, you're yeah, not missing the a minus, minus sign. Yeah, the minus sign is fine. Yeah, so this is what we did. Uh, one thing, uh, yeah, the negative comes from somewhere else, sorry. You see how we took the derivative in here? The, the, uh, when we took this, there was a minus x that came down. So the integral that we have is a minus right here. Oh, I see. I see. We're yeah. forgetting this one. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. All good. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. So, but this integral, yeah, this integral as we have, it's equal to this. Yeah. Zero to infinity of sine x e to the negative tx dx is equals to one over one plus t squared. Good. So that's good. Now our i prime of t which is negative this integral, it would be minus 1 over 1 plus t squared. Good. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I see where this is going. So we say yeah. di dt is equal to negative 1 over 1 plus t squared. And then are you going to exactly. integrate both sides? That's what you're going to do? Exactly. Oh, so wow. We, that's beautiful. So now we are going to we're gonna integrate this. Now, okay. when we integrate this... Uh, this is going to be i is going to be minus. Now, this is again one of those integrals that this one, you know, you can easily. You should do know it. this one, but this is arctangent. You should know we this should one. Do it. So, this is the arctan, arctan of t. Okay. But then we're like, wait, what the hell is t? But plus c as well. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, this is i of t. I of t is arctangent of t. Is equals to... Oh, minus, and we're looking for i of zero. Yeah, arctan of t. Oh my god, this is so, so cool. i of zero... I'm sorry, I'm nerding out so hard. This is so cool. Yeah, this is like... This is like... One this is the, beautiful. This is where like math brings tears to my like my eyes because like it's so pretty. <laughs> I know most of the students are like, what the shit is this, Dr. Gold? I'm like, trust me, this is very pretty. It's very pretty how this works. Yeah. Very pretty. And so yeah, once you... Once you set um, your t to be equal to zero, then you get it's equal to zero. This to be right. Uh, arc, no, arc, minus. Isn't is arc tan of zero yeah, to zero? Arc tan of zero is. Uh, I think it's just zero. Right, opposite over adjacent. Three. Opposite over adjacent. Zero. You want the opposite one. to be zero. Yeah, I think. Uh, one sec. I feel like we should know One this. Uh, yeah, the arctangent of zero is zero. Do we not know the arctangent of zero is zero? Am I, am I crazy, man? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. Arctangent of zero is zero. Yeah, you're right. Okay, thank Which you. Which you can use C. <laughs> okay, arctangent of zero is zero. Okay, good. We, we figured, arctangent of zero is zero. Yeah, you're we right. Figure out, we, we didn't figure that out. C, good. Right? Now, oh, okay. Here, now, here's the part. We don't know what C is. Oh, right? no. It's from the, but we can, again, go back to the original thing. So... Remember, i of t uh -huh. was the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x d dx tx dx. Now, another okay. th reason why... So, again, explaining why you would take a function like e to the negative tx. So the negative came from the fact that, uh, you know, you want this to converge. Yeah, I don't want it to diverge. Now, another thing is, you, at any time you do Feynman's technique, whenever you you have to essentially 
uh, first differentiate, get rid of the thing you don't want lying around. Yep, yep. And then you integrate with respect to the variable that you introduced. Yeah. And That's every time you do that, you end up with a constant. Yes. So this, this process always ha happens. Uh, you end up with a constant. Now, the question becomes What is the constant? What is this constant? Yeah. So you have to take your first function that you introduce carefully because you want to be able to get this integral into a format that either gives you some kind of a trivial answer or something that, um, that uh, makes a little bit of, uh, uh, sorry, that makes the integral really easy. So if okay. you take i of infinity or the limit of t going to infinity, then you get this to go to zero. So you just have the integral of zero, which is just zero. Okay. So C is zero then. No? So yeah, well, one sec. I feel like I made a mistake somewhere. Um, so yeah, uh, all, so far all of the steps are correct. Let me see where I could have. Because I have the final answer. Oh, we can always just ask Wolfram to do it. They say it's pi over 2? Yeah, it should be pi over 2. Uh, oh. <laughs> which is why I'm... I'm trying to see... Oh, okay, here's what you do, actually. Sorry. The okay. limit of i going to into infinity yeah so when we plug in zero that's not what we're looking for actually so let me we do that step one later okay 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 so when we do this this is equals to zero right but our answer which we said is negative r tan of t plus c i of t as t goes to infinity the limit Oh, okay. Arc Ar arctangent of infinity is pi over two. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So this is minus arctan of infinity plus c is equals to zero, right? Okay. Which is minus pi over two plus c is equals to zero. Very cool. Okay. Which gives you c is equals to zero. Oh, sorry, so c, c equals, equals pi over two. Pi over equals pi over two. two. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. And then we do i of zero is negative arctan of zero plus pi over two, this goes away, and we're left with a final answer, and we did it, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Wow, that's dope. Yeah, so the, the step that I did was, when we get this to be zero, we would have gotten, um, this is equals to zero, but we don't, we don't know what is equals to zero, right? Right. Because the, the, thing, that, uh, the thing that we already calculated was, I of zero is equals to C, but how does C connect to this doesn't really Yeah, no, you have to do the full like limit as T approaches infinity yeah. of I of T needs to be equal to zero. Yeah, to find C and then to find plug C. In zero and then you plug it and then you plug it into that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Wow. Wow, what a question. What a question, DeMar DeMarcus. Like what? Who could have thought that this, like, where, what was our original thing? This? Bro, this, that's too many words. Bro, I'm telling you, dog, dude, this was what it was. It was champagne, burger, and beer, and it turned into learning this really dope thing called Feynman's Technique <laughs> to enable to solve it. And we got that the answer was pi over two. If y'all are ever, like, questioning, like, what happens when there's champagne, burgers, and beer, there's just pi. Yeah. Yo, what? What, dude? Blowing my mind. That's dope. Anyways, there were a lot of <clears throat> there were a lot of very cool concepts in here um, that related to calculus, and this is why, guys. For instance, like when you go through calculus, you have to learn all these little like tools and steps, is because we needed a lot of those in order to do the final thing here, which was did Feynman come up with this? Is this why it's called Feynman's technique? It's a pretty cool technique, yeah. honestly. Yeah, it's like, nice. It's it's a nice hack. Yeah, there's there's a lot of integrals that uh, like. You, you really can't solve it properly, but okay. you can use it so with Feynman's technique. So one of the things is, in order for you to be able to solve Feynman's technique, first of all, because you need to integrate, uh, actually uh, evaluate the integral, 
which is going to be some easier version. You see in here, after we integrated it, yeah, we end up with, or actually, if you scroll down. Yeah, yeah after we integrate this, we ended up with 1 over 1 plus t squared, right? Yeah. Which means that there's no more x's lying around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. X so is away. This works only when Love you getting have... getting rid of my x's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like solid gum. Um, yeah. With uh, Feynman techniques, it works mostly when you have indefinite, or sorry, definite integrals. Sure. So definite integrals are the ones that works really well with Feynman's technique. And a lot of the times, these ones can be done um, like more like maybe numerically as well, yeah. right? But, you know, so I think it's, uh, it's not necessarily the, the, like the, if you want to use like a technique to actually find the answer for it. I, I, I like I like the, the intuition thing. Yeah, again, so th this yeah. happens a lot in math. You know, sometimes kids say like, wait, how do you know how to do that? And it's because you've done something similar. Like the reason why Ramton knew to do this trick or this hack is that it looked like something that he's done before that yeah. was similar. Like he's, This he's is like, also like one of the first examples I saw. Or, oh, it was. Uh, oh, or something similar to it. Then. But, uh, it's a similar example when you do um, with Feynman technique. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. There is another thing that I could also uh, I'll show quickly. That one's okay. actually not that long. You need to know kind of like infinite series, but it works out kind of nicely. Okay. So the integral that you have is sine x over x. Now this is one that I think noise might like. Is that sine x? This is one plus, or x. sorry, no. uh, it's one plus. It's x, yeah, x minus x cubed over three factorial plus x to the five over five factorial. Is sine the odd ones? I thought cosine was the odd ones. Uh, I'm pretty sure because once you put zero, right? It's oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. You got good. You should get you just. Yeah, that's how I always. I only look at the first. Okay, so once you do this, you can actually take this infinite, and it alternates back and forth again. You yeah. can take this infinite series and put it into this. Now, because all of these have x's, you can, you can essentially separate it into a bunch of, uh, bunch of fractions, and each of them cancels out one x. So you end up getting the integral of 1 minus x squared over 3 factorial mm -hmm. uh, plus x to the 4 over 5 factorial minus da, 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 dx and okay. you can again you can just uh integrate this one by one so you end up getting x minus x cubed sorry x to the third over four x factorial third over no it would be three times three times three factorial, three factorial um minus x to the five or is that plus x to the 5 over 5 times 5 factorial? So on and so forth. Okay. What's so on and so forth. And then this is an infinite series. Yes. Uh, and then you integrate this from 0 to infinity. And this goes i equals 2. Or I guess like this is a series of you can write down. But okay. yeah, like there's another way of doing that. It gets a little bit complicated, but... Um, as long as there's a thing called the Bessel function or like the Bessel series. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Because I see how this is like almost like a phase off. It's a phase off, honestly, right? From, from, from. Yeah. Side. And so that's yeah, probably yeah. where the pi over two comes from. Is it called Bessel? It might have been called Bessel's problem, actually. Maybe it's like the Fresnel stuff. I'm going to put. Oh, maybe it's a different Bessel. That's Basel? cool, though. I mean that yeah ba ba basal functions I think so yeah oh it, yeah I'll, I think it kind of uh, boils down to something similar to that one okay and then you can solve it again using infinite series but that again I like your technique I like I like the 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 Feynman trick that's really cool yeah super dope because he bought a Lego set. The of being a physicist.
Give it a second. It has to upload. There we go. Because Ethan always gives me like massive images. Um, cool. Yeah, no, I liked this. Ram 10, this was very cool. I learned something new here. Or maybe Noyce learned something new. No, this was, this is a very cool technique. I've never seen this. Where did you learn this, Rampton, by the way? Uh, honestly, what, like, what like I, I just kept, I always watch, like, YouTube videos or, like, on, like, doing integrals and stuff like that. And, yeah. like, I've seen something like that, like, in math problems and stuff. And then I, I kind of just came across it, I guess. That's cool. Like, multiple times with... I love uh, this. Just, yeah, this is, like, the extracurricular, like, I want to go learn more math stuff. Where, like, yeah. people are, like, genuinely curious. And, like, you know, if someone had showed me that in calculus, for instance, in my class, I would have thought, like, wow, this is very cool. Now I'm more interested in math. I would want to go to do more math. Because I'm like, I didn't know there were, like, magic tricks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, Teacup, you here? Let's run through yours and Ethan's real quick. And then uh, I know the boys want to play Warzone. Hello. Hello, teacup. Okay, here we go. Cody eats some magic birdie bots ever flavor beans from a cup, which is a rotationally symmetric solid for which the radius of the position is this, and X goes from 0 to 4. Find the volume. This is cool. It's called volume of revolution, teacup. You ever heard of this before? Nope. Nope. It says no. Nope. Not. That's okay. Okay. So, uh, let me make... Okay. Uh... All right. So this is, uh, when they say the radius, okay, this is r is equal to the square root of x. This is kind of like the same thing as saying y is equal to the square root of x. You know what y is equal to the square root of x looks like? Why? Is that the parabola? That's it's it's kind of like half a parabola. It looks like this, basically. Okay? This is y is equal to the square root of x. Okay? End up looking something like this. Okay? Say this is, for instance, x, and this is y. Okay. And then what they say they're doing is um, it's rotationally symmetric. Rotationally symmetric means that you can rotate it about an axis, and it, it, um, it's, like, symmetric about it. Okay. Well, I mean, you know what symmetry means, right? If something's, like, symmetric, like, this is symmetric to this, right? This would be, like, symmetric over the y-axis. This would be, like, symmetric over the x-axis. Rotationally symmetric means I can go all the way around this thing, and it kind of looks the same. Okay, so what this ends up looking like, uh, let me see if I can get my circles to, oh, Jesus. Ends up kind of looking something like this. Well, that's beautiful. So do, you, do you see how this is kind of going to make kind of like a, uh, like a goblet, I guess, for instance, right? Yeah. If I take this and, like, I rotate it around. Cool. All right. So the way – this is called the, the method of uh, disks, I think is what it's called. Yeah, disks. So what we're going to do – this is the cool thing about integrals – is that I could approximate the volume, right, of this goblet-looking thing if I took the area, right, of, an, of each individual circle and added them all up as I went, you know, further and further – down x, right? Mm -hmm. so, do you, do you kind of see that as like as a way that you could figure out the volume? Like you know how to find the volume of something, right? Like what what what's the volume yeah. of uh what's the volume of this for instance? What's 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 this volume? Let's say this is. I, mean, I can't. One second, I can't see it. Oh, you can't see it? Oh, come see. It. Uh, what's that triangular prism? Good. Yeah. How would I find the volume of this thing? Let's say this is like ten. Well, you you have okay. So you have I'm dying. Okay, don't die. We have the base of it. The right, this is the base. We have the base, the height. The height would be four, I guess. And yeah, I... then we have the length of the actual prism, which is ten. Good. So I know there's like an equation you probably know for this, right? But let's think about this conceptually. What you're doing here, teacup, is you're taking the area of this thing, okay, which is one half base times height, 
right? What does that get you? Hello. Yeah. What 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 does that get you? What is what what is what is the what is the area of this this triangle? It would be six. But... Six. Good. And then you're multiplying that by ten. You see how you're taking the area? You're taking you're, you're, yeah, so you're taking like the area of what we say is a cross section, and then you're adding up a bunch of them, okay? You're multiplying by 10. And, and that's what's giving you the volume, okay? This is conceptually how you can calculate the volume of something. You take what's called the cross sectional area of something, and then you multiply how many of those you have to stack on top of it. Does that make sense? Yes. Does okay. Well, okay. Let's let let's say let's say we had this. Let's say we had. Um. Let's say we had a cylinder, like like a, a can of soda pop, right? Let's say this. Okay. Let's say that um. R, for instance, here, right, is equal to six. Let's say H is equal to ten. Do you know how to calculate the volume of this? Right, how much soda you can put in the can? 3.14 times 6 I, squared. 6 times squared. 10. Okay, good. You know that from this equation, right? Pi r squared times h. I know you know that, yes. right? Let's, let's break down where that comes from, okay? Pi r squared, okay, that is the area of this. That's the you area see of that? circle. Good, that is the area of a circle. Very good. Okay, cool. See, that's what that is, okay? And then the times h, okay? is basically just stacking a bunch of these things all the way up until I have 10. Okay? Mm -hmm. You see how that works conceptually? Yes. We're going to do the same thing to try to find... So this is something where, <clears throat> for instance, the cross-sectional area of our, of our base here, right, this, this circle and whatnot, it does not change as we go up. See how it stays the same? It's the same circle going all the way up? Mm -hmm. Now, in the case of this goblet... It's also having a cross-sectional area of a circle, but that cross-sectional area is getting bigger as we go up. It's changing. Okay? Yes. This is where integrals are very powerful. Integrals allow you to add things up, but if the things are changing as you add them up, it allows you to do that. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, what the equation for this ends up being is going to be the integral from, uh, well, look, look, yeah, I'll worry about the bounds later. Okay. So let's imagine, right, I want to add up the cross-sectional area of this, right? What, what, what would be the equation for the cross-sectional area of one of these triangles, or one of these circles, sorry? I'm having a playback error. Wait, what? Are, can you just watch the Discord? Discord not working? Well, I was just stuck on the loading screen for me. Oh. Discord's stuck on the loading screen. What? Is that for anybody else? Technical issue, gods. Uh, it, it seems fine for me. Yeah, it's, it's probably just... Probably just... Uh, yeah. All right, it's okay. Here, we'll just go forward. All right. If this is a circle... All right, this is going to have an area of what we call is like pi r squared, okay? However, the radius of this circle depends where in x you are, right? If you're at the beginning of the goblet at like x equals zero, your radius is zero, okay? But if I'm way out here, right, my radius is now what we call uh, the square root of x. That's what this, this function is, okay? So this is going to be pi times the square root of x squared, okay? And then this is where the, the integral stuff comes in, into handy, where this is powerful, is if I want to add up a bunch of these along the x-axis, I'm going to put dx. dx is like basically saying, okay, just add them all up in this direction. And then I have to tell it from where to where to add them up. And uh, that's going to go from 0 to 4. So this ends up being your integral. It's actually very cool. I mean, like, there's a lot of parallels between, like, mathematics and, like, I think computer coding. And that, that's what I like to think about when, when we're creating these, like, integrals is you're basically writing code you're telling it hey uh i need you to figure out what the area is of one of these circles and then i need you to add all of them up 
from zero to four. And the cross-sectional area of each one of these circles depends on where you're at. It's like riding a, a fun, like, for loop or something. Infinite for loop, I guess. Um, anyways, this is not a hard integral to evaluate because then this is the integral from zero to four of pi squared of x squared is just x. So this is pi x dx. Um, then we can pull the pi out. Hiccup, you know what the integral of x dx is? Mr. Bean's going to wait for your internet to come back. There he is. Okay. Do you know what the integral of x is? What's the integral of x? Is it x squared? Over 2. Okay. So this is pi, x squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to 4. That's what you do with these things. Okay. Do you remember what we do here with the 4 and the 0? Do we do uh, x squared times 0? No, no, no. We plug this in for x squared. So this is pi times 4 squared over 2. And then I subtract it from plugging 0 into it. So that's minus pi times 0 squared over 2. Okay. This ends up becoming 8 pi minus 0. And so your uh, final answer is then just going to be 8 pi units. We say units cube is like cubic units. That's dope. Oh, did you do it? I did do it. <laughs> it's okay. Just get, get your internet fixed. <laughs> oh, no. It's not that you did it. We did it. This is a communist. It's what? This is the communist Russia. Communist Russia. Okay, Ethan, where yeah, you at? Let's do your question real quick. Let's do yours, Ethan. Then uh, I know Pew. I'm sorry about my thing. It's okay. Don't worry. It's not your fault. Internet's not your fault. I have Comcast. one last thing to say. What's up, dude? You have one day. I have one day. I know. Well, I also need Mr. Beast to reply to me. <laughs> Go yell at him, y'all. Y'all well, are kids. Wondering also, can I pl play with you guys? If not played Warzone before, like, of course, it's gonna be like level nada. No, it's fine, dude. Actually, if anything, it'll be great because we'll be putting like bot lobbies, so they'll just be easy people. No, to but like, us. even if I'm like level zero, I don't have to play bots or anything. No, 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 no. I know Halo's like that. Halo's weird. They won't let you play ranked unless you've played a couple games. But like, no Warzone, you can literally come in having never played. Well, no, wait. That makes sense on Halo. Hello. What's up, Ethan? Okay, how do we do this one? What's up? Ooh, I like that. When the velocity is... Oh, this is an interesting question. Okay. A 0 0.1... Is this 0 0.185? Is this what this says, Ethan? 0 0.185? Yes, yes, it does say that. Okay, 0 0.185 kilogram club is swung at an angle of 18 degrees and hits a ball... Got... Wait. Oh, wait, what the shit? Oh, wait. Oh, there's two of these things. Uh, okay, so this is the mass of the club. Mass of the ball is equal to 0 0.045 kilograms. And they say, how far ball travel <laughs> when B is equal to 49.3? That's actually a good question. I mean, what do you mean by, like, how far does it travel? Like, how far does it travel in X? How far does it travel in Y? Or, like, what is it, like, its arc length? Is that what they want? Hold on, let me check. Yeah, that's, that's curious. No, I think it's just how far, but I think the, the velocity in here is for the golf club. Oh. Yeah, so the golf club is hitting the ball. Okay, uh, cool. the, I don't think the, the 18 degrees is the direction of the ball taken off. Yeah. But the golf club is going to be hitting the, um, uh, what's it called? Yeah, yeah, the, the, the ball. The ball yeah. And then the ball would lift off at an 18 degree angle. Okay. And I think for the first part of this question is Conservation momentum. Yeah, yeah. Well, technically, it's like they could have made this problem more interesting if they gave the dimensions of the golf club. Oh, yeah, Because right. then it would have been linear conversion of angular to linear momentum first. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah that yeah, and then we yeah, this this could get all sorts of fun. 
Yeah, I guess they, they give us the linear linear this is linear velocity then. Uh wait, would there be a change in angle Oh there would be a change in the angular momentum, wouldn't there? Oh wow. I mean the angular I momentum would be constant, but you would transfer some of the angular momentum from the golf club to the ball. Oh yeah. Man. Well that would be get complicated. Yeah, because the because it would just be the the shape of the golf club. Which is like what one twelve ml. Yeah, one twelve ml squared, right, is equal to one twelve, or is ml squared omega, right? Uh, I think, I think it's, so. Yeah. I think one twelve is like a rod, and then this would be plus mr squared, right? Omega. <laughs> oh, this would get. Oh, this is horrible. I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, I think something like that. Yeah, I think for the ball it would be r cross p. Yeah. And then the other one would just be whatever the angle is. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. All right. Um, here. Uh, what's up, Ethan? I really don't know. I did not really say anything, but I think it's probably the air. It's like how far it travels. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. All right. There's a lot of stuff here, Ethan, that you haven't done yet. So um, I think I'm going to do part of this question for you because... If we do the whole thing, it's going to take like an hour for me to teach you all the different parts. Then, uh, so let's just break this into bite-sized stuff. Uh, okay, the first thing we're going to learn about is called conservation momentum. Have you ever heard this term before, conservation momentum? No. Okay. Is it saving momentum or something? So momentum is represented by the variable P in physics. And for things that are moving just in a line and whatnot, this is equal to what we say is the mass times the velocity. Okay, MV. Good. Momentum can be thought of as um, how much resistance something has to being, like, changed. You know, if something has a lot of momentum, it takes a lot of force to change it, is what I like to say. You know, like, like a train, right? A train has a lot of momentum, because even if a train is moving very slowly, a train is very heavy. So it takes a lot of force to change, like, where the train is going. Hey, that's cool. Yeah, what's up? I thought momentum was another way of saying, like, movement, okay? It is. Yeah, no, it, it is movement, because it's mass and velocity. Because, see, the thing is, is that it's like when the train goes fast, it's like, isn't it a little hard to stop it? Yes, exactly. That's because the train has a lot of mass. So it doesn't matter how fast the train is going. Because it has a lot of mass, it ends up taking a lot of force to change any sort of movement of that train. Okay. 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 What you'll learn eventually, which is a thing called impulse, is that in order to change momentum, this is equal to what's called um, the force times the amount of time the force is applied. This is another more advanced concept. I'm not going to get too much into because it it's a rabbit hole. But basically, in order for some, if something has a lot of momentum and you're trying to change that momentum, you're going to end up having to apply a big force, and then you're probably going to have to do it for a lot of time. That's why, like, if someone wants to really, like, change the movement of a train, you either have to be Superman or you need to be a, a very, I guess, resilient person who can just keep pushing on the train for a lot of, a lot of time. Okay. okay. All right. That basically means you have to be super strong, right? Yeah, you do have to be super strong. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the main thing here we want to learn uh, about contrary momentum is that anytime you have a collision, so a collision is when, like, something hits something, you know, there's always kind of like a before and after to a collision. You know that there's a crash, right? It's a crash. Crash, yeah, for sure. A collision just means something hits something. Um, but anytime we have a collision, the total momentum we say of the system, and the system just means all the stuff that's happening, that momentum needs to be the same before and after. That's what conservation momentum is. There's some... You know, asterisks around this, right? This is if you have conservative whatever the fuck forces and, like, I don't know, there's no friction, but and things aren't breaking, but for the majority of situations, momentum is conserved. Okay? Okay. Okay, cool. So, what we're going to do is we have two situations here, Ethan, okay? In the first situation, I have a club and I have a ball. The ball, okay? Wait, let's put the ball, like... Uh, put the ball like over here. This is what I call like before, okay? Alright. Before, the, before, the before it hits it. it. Before it hits it, okay? 
And then afterwards, okay, right? The club has hit the ball, right? Here's the club. And the ball is now being launched away, right? That makes sense? Why don't, you, why don't you put it somewhere in the air then? Yeah, sure, we can put it. Well, um, yeah, whatever. It's like, it's just, just, you just, you know, it's, this is like right after it. And I don't know, I'm looking very close to it. Uh, okay. Okay. What we want to do uh, is we want to see what the velocity of this ball is once the club hits it. Okay? Or after the club has hit it. Like, and we say after, we say like right after it's hit it. Okay? So the club has a mass of, what is that, 0.185? So this has a mass of equal to 0.185. And then this has a mass of equal to, what is that, 0.045? Okay, and we say that the club has an initial velocity, right? We're hitting the club with a speed of 49.3 meters per second, okay? Now, here's a good question. What's the speed of the ball before it gets hit when it's just, like, laying there on the ground? What's that speed? The speed? Mm -hmm. I, I suppose it's going to be, like, higher than when the golf club hit it. No, no, no. I mean, before the golf club hits it. What, what, what's, what's the ball doing before the golf club hits it? All right, it's resting, so it's yeah, not it's doing good. anything, so it's good. Good. Okay, good. All right. Uh, so this is going to be zero, okay? All right. Now, afterwards, okay, club has the same amount of mass, okay? We're going to assume that the club stops instantly. We're going to assume that once you hit the ball, you stop moving the club. Um... We're going to say that's equal to zero, okay? And then the mass here yes. is equal to 0 0.045. And then what we're trying to figure out here, Ethan, is I want to know how fast the ball is now moving once it's been hit by the club. Hey, what's up, Rip? Okay. Okay. Um, cool. All right. So what do you have to do now? So we have to use conservation of momentum. Um, so... What we say with conservation momentum is, this is the notation they use for Ethan. They say that um, the sum of P, which is the same thing as the sum of MV, has to okay, be constant. That's cool. Yes. What is that sideways M? That sideways M means add up all the things that are in the picture. <laughs> I don't know what it means, yeah. Sum of means add up all the things? Yeah, sum. Some means add them all up, okay? All right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to add up what all the momentums are, all the MVs are for each object in our situation, okay? So, in the before, right, we have the momentum of the club and the momentum of the ball. How do I figure out what the momentum of the club is? I suppose you add them all up. Well, we need to do M times V, okay? It's adding up the... It's adding up M times V, okay, for each thing. Okay. So, in this case, um, where's my calculator? There it is. We're going to do Whoa. 0.185 times 49.3, okay? That's the momentum of the club. That's, the, that's what we say the MV here is equal to 9.12. What's the MV mm. of the ball? I think that's just zero. Good, exactly. Good. Okay, so when I say the sum of the momentums, do you see how I'm adding 9.12 plus zero? That's what this it's means. Just 9 Good, 9.12. Awesome, okay. This is equal to, Ethan, the sum of the momentums on this side, okay? So here, let's figure out, what's the momentum of the club after it's hit the ball? So it's at zero since it now rests. Good. And then what's the momentum of the ball after it's been hit? Uh, is, isn't that a little unknown right now? Good, it's unknown, exactly. This is point, so this MV here is equal to point oh four five times V. I don't know the velocity. Yeah, so that's what we're trying to find this entire time. Good, exactly. Okay, so watch. So let me add up all the MVs here, right? Do you see how this is zero plus point oh four five V? Okay, yeah, I did that. So this is going to be 0.045V, right? Did you see how 
This total momentum needs to equal this total momentum. We have a number here, and we have our unknown here. So how, how do I solve for this? You got to divide, divide by 0 0.045. Good, exactly. So I'm going to divide this by 0.045, right? And that's going to give me uh, V is equal to 202.7 meters per second. Well, cool. that's, that's easy. That's that. Yeah. Well, no good. It's 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 a hard concept. Honestly, some people don't get this concept. This this is conservation. Oh, you gotta go, uh, lizard. All right. Good to see you. Good to see you, lizard. Oh yeah, it is Saturday for you because he's a or sorry, he's a day ahead because he's in New Zealand. Yeah. Good to see you, lizard. Um, yeah. So this is just two hundred and two meters. So that's the speed of the ball after it's been hit by the club. Is that cool. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Um, we can do the we can do the second part of this next time because uh, I, I I gotta teach you more like kinematics. But this this is the this is the first step that you need to do, and this is a very important concept. It's actually kind of cool. Let's see what like two what is two hundred and two meters per second to miles per hour. I feel like that's very high. Yeah, what four hundred and fifty miles per hour? What what could be as equal? <laughs> what could be as close like that? Nothing. Yeah, I think you're right. Which I, I, I don't think the club is swung at 49 meters per second. Because that's a lot, dude. <laughs> 50 meters per second. Yeah, that's 111 miles per hour. Like, what? You can't swing a club at 111 miles per hour. That's super high. Okay, well. It's okay, yeah. You know what you should do, Ethan? Uh, when you write these questions, can you just take a picture of it so I can see, like, what it is? Because there may, may be a diagram that would have helped me, like, understand which number is which. I I don't know how to screenshot. Why am I on a tablet? Oh, uh, you just hit like the you hit the what is it the the power button and like the the, the usually the volume down button. We'll we'll take a screenshot. You do that at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Look up how to take a screenshot on your tablet. Like I don't know what tablet you're using. Look up like how to take a screenshot. That'll save you some time. So you won't you won't have to handwrite the stuff either. You know. Okay. Cool. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming to Office Hours. Had a fun time learning a lot of cool stuff today. I really, you know, big shout out to Ramton. I love that. That method there was very cool, the, the Feynman method. Um, I thought it was dope. Uh, volumes of Revolutions, another really cool thing. And then we learned Conservation and Momentum. These are all, it's cool. These are all different topics that are very uh, relevant and used a lot in... Uh, upper high school, definitely college level classes. Good to get you guys prepped for that. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, we just took so too. What's up? That'd be a fall. You used Pixel 2. I use a, I use a Pixel 7. Pixel 6. Pixel 6 Pro. Yeah, I use the Pixel 7. It's, it's the most secure. Like in terms of information security. Yeah, or, yeah, I know uh, you. You probably would definitely yeah. not use a what was it a a a, a Huawei or a, what's yeah. the other company? Uh, one plus one. They're also owned by the Chinese government. <laughs> one plus is another company, and a Sony is another one. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's kind of funny that they they went off of all the Android stuff because of the whole yeah Google and China weren't playing nice with each other. So Pixel is especially secure because one of the Hong Kong protesters used this phone and now that three years has passed, the recording started is still unable to crack it. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. What about with Apple stuff? Are they able to crack the Apple stuff because they make it in Foxconn? Yeah, they are. Apple stuff they can crack really. That's cool. The, the, the person is found to phone their iPhone was cracked. Yeah, exactly. I would probably buy some like uh, so cyber warlord in Israel. Some that... cyber war. Yeah, the Israelis know how to hack stuff. That and the what is it? The Ukrainians. The Ukrainians are really good at hacking stuff too. Yeah, and, but yeah, like China is very like anti-Semitic. Oh, interesting. Oh, I didn't know that. Like, well, they're just they're they're anti any religion. They just don't like any religion because religion takes away from their power. I guess right. Yeah. That's why, like, and also, the, the, uh, like, it's not a religion, it's also about, like, they are neutral Nazis, they, they hate Jewish people, too. I don't know why Israel decides to co cooperate with, with them. Yeah, I don't know, they're just all... All 
All right. Uh, cool. All right. Uh, so we're gonna do some Warzone now. If you guys want to come play Warzone with us, let me let me tag all the the Warzone gamers. Tell them we're gonna play. Um, otherwise, we have Golden Hour tomorrow. Uh, same time, 4 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. Ranton, Hypatia, you guys gonna come? Y'all yeah, join. Sick. Yeah, I will. Awesome. Love it, guys. Uh, yeah, so we'll have that. And then the next office hours will be on Friday. That's an hour later, 5 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. So if you want to keep hanging around uh, and play some Warzone with us, we're going to do. Yeah, we're gonna watch Ranton's first time playing Warzone, and this will probably be a Hypatia's second, right? <laughs> Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do that in actual gaming. So if you're hanging around the Twitch, uh, just stick around. You're gonna get raided over. Uh, and then if you're in the Discord, uh, just meet us down in the recess VC. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'll see you guys down in recess. Until next time. Peace out. All right.